Next. <coughs> Abdul Rahman. Yes, mashallah. Uzur in chapter 94, Alam Nashrah Laka Sadraka. Uzur it is narrated from this verse that two angels opened the heart of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and cut away some flesh and clearly then close it. So what is the what is true about this this narration? The chapter translation to Arabic. That uh, verse which says Alam Nashra Laka Sadraka. He says that it is generally mentioned that no, two in the first read it first. This is what we want you to do. I know understand yeah. that. And read the translation as well. Yeah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم نشرح لك صدرك ووزانا أنك وزرك الذي أنقذ زهرك ورفعنا لك ذكرك فإن ما لسر يسرا إن ما لسر يسرا فإذا فرقت فانصب وإلى ربك فرغب Translation is in the name of Allah the gracious the merciful have we not opened for thee thy bosom and removed from thee thy burden which had well nigh broken thy back, and we have exalted thy name. Surely there is ease after hardship. Surely there is ease after hardship. So when thou art free from the immediate task, strive hard, and to thy Lord do thou turn with full attention. Now, this is the digital translation made by Malagulam Free. And the similar translations are found in many of English versions of this great surah in Ahmadiyya translations. Different translations practically speak of the same. I once started a series of sermons on this verse particularly. And as far as the commentary is concerned, commentary of the translation, that commentary indicated that this translation does not do justice to what the Quran expresses in relation to Rasulullah and his ibadah. So it's not possible for me to re repeat all that I said about it, but I can turn to the central points of this surah. First of all, it cannot apply to that incident of childhood when Ahazur sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw in a vision or they say actually somebody came from heaven to open his heart, his chest and take his heart out and wash it and replace it. Because this verse speaks of a different situation altogether. It was not from that time that Rasulullah sallam realized that there is some back-breaking burden on him. It was not from that incident that he started speaking of Islam and everything. This verse does not apply to that. It's impossible. That is an incident reported by different hadith. One has to see into it whether these reporters are absolutely right or maybe wrong or maybe they have heard things. We do not hear any old Ravi who, who believed in Ahadur right from the beginning reporting that incident from the tongue of Muhammad Muhammad himself. But I do not want to indulge in that I believe this is possible. This might have happened to Ahadur as by way of a prophecy but in a vision, not an actual thing, not as an actual surgical operation. And there are no signs of any surgical operation on the chest of the Rasulullah But let's leave that apart for a while. Turn to the central point of this verse. 
الم نشرح لك صدرك ووضعنا عنك وزرك الذي انقذ ظهرك This is a continuous statement. Have we not opened up your heart, not through operation, but made it relax and begin to see things in a manner that the back-breaking burden is removed because of that. So this means that his prophecy is the back-breaking burden. It's on him. And Allah regarding that repeatedly him told, repeatedly told him that it's our responsibility. We are going to make Islam victorious, don't worry. La to harrik bhe hilisanat. Even fast reading of the Quran was prohibited. Mildly and with love. Don't do it. In the arayana jamma hu Qurana. So all the great burden of delivering the load of Islam correctly to the people of the world, this was the back-breaking burden on Rasulullah Sallallahu which Allah told him, don't worry, we are going to take it, take, I mean, deliver the message which you have delivered in the sense that we will see that this delivered message becomes victorious in the end. This is what made the insha'ah. Now, Alam nashara ke saath wadana anka vidwa ka ladhi anqadad lahara wa rafana laka zikra A time reached when Rasulullah Sallam's name began to rise after the full victory of Islam at least over Arabia and the adjacent areas. So that was a prophecy in this. If this is what's going to happen, you will see it with your own eyes. Inna maal usre yusran. Inna maal usre yusra. Now this again cannot apply to that opening of the heart as people believe happened virtually, literally. It doesn't mean that you felt a pain and then you will feel ease. And then why he should feel pain again? That the verse should be repeated. Inna maal usra yusra, inna maal usra yusra. And again, faiza farahta, fansab. How does it tally with this statement? If inna maal usra yusra, inna maal usra yusra means that daily you work hard and then you have to rest at last. Or every hardship follows with a rest. Then this is what this is what not this is not what the Quran invites him to. Then the Quran should have said, O Prophet of Allah, all day long you have been doing hardship in this in the path of Allah. Now have some rest. That is Mal Usri Yusram. But it doesn't say have some rest. Inna Mal Usri Yusra. And the Quran repeats, remember, after every hardship you have earned some rest. Humans do that. So you also rest. But immediately it says, when the problems of the day are over, then stand up. But what the translators forget is, is the word which follows. Farghab means that all through the daily tiring work, his mind was hung on to God. And it was in him that he, he sought rest. He loved to be alone with him. When the worldly occupations made it not possible entirely to do so. So while prayer of the night is it is sometimes a tiring task for even the great noble people, 
those people worship God in the right sense. But still, this apparently tiring task was a pleasure for Rasulullah sallam. Fargab. So fargab should be translated in the little sense. Then seek your pleasure in God's pleasure with you when you stand up before Him. Now this point has never been understood by anyone before except by Hazrat Muslim of Islam. That shows the greatness of him and that shows that he was really a, a prophet of Allah, a man from God whom God himself taught these things. You know, in his tafsir about the daily prayer, he tells a fantastic thing which others do not tell us like he did. He says that the prayer is a hardship only until you perfect it and uh, is no longer a burden. So some old great Muslim scholars have also said this much, that the prayer as long as it demands effort, is a burden and it is a must. But when you are relieved of this burden, when it's no longer a burden, then should you leave the prayer because it's not necessary? In answer to this, has Muslim other has given a much better explanation than anyone else before. He said, why should you leave it when your heart is attached to it? Once it's not essential in the sense that uh, the prayer is, has come to, to its final form and is completed. Then you get attached to prayer, it's not the prayer that is attached to you. It only happens when you begin to get the maximum prayer out of your prayers. So when you get maximum prayers, a pleasure, why should you leave it? It's impossible. When you understand that this is the thing for me, then it will be only a madman who will leave this prayer. So, فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَنْصَبْ وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرْغَ is the same message which is delivered in, in this way. Now you have reached a stage that prayer does not need to be uh, you know, erected like a tent is erected. Does not need to be taken care of because you have achieved everything. But now your heart is so much attached to the prayer that all your love and all your prayer remain centered in the prayer of Allah. So wait until the works of the days are over. Then have your own will. And draw the prayer of love of Allah as much as long as you please. But at another stage, he was told also to halve the prayer. It was not because it was tiring for him. It was because he was also an uswa. If he had said his prayer all night long, then all the followers of Muhammad Sallallahu will be compelled to do it. And many times it happened. So Allah took pity on us because our prayer had not reached that perfection. So you have the time, or sometimes less, sometimes a little more, depends on the time of the year. So it is not a contradiction. That's in agreement with what I'm, full agreement with what I'm telling you. Understood? Thank you. Now again, we must pay full homage to Abdul Rahman. Always thinks of most wonderful thing, and although sometimes. I do not answer what 
agitates his mind. But he gives me the occasion to say things which should have agitated his mind. Right? Hazrat Muslim Salaam has discussed this issue in relation to an observation made by a great Muslim saint which was presented to him or he read it himself and then commented on it once in the mosque. What he said was, originally what he said was, that reward of a prayer or any good which you do for the sake of Allah is only essential for God to pay you as long you have you suffer for that something. When there is no suffering, there is no reward. Now, this surprised those who heard it. Because he said, he later on said that in Namaz also, we may reach a stage where it is no suffering at all. So the reward finishes. See? This was very surprising. So the person, someone asked, if the reward finishes, then why should we say prayer? <coughs> In response to it, this he said, that the reward finishes because it has become easy. But you do it then for the sake of Allah. And the, your pleasure in doing it becomes your reward. Now, this was the whole incident which has Mr. Sadhguru quoted <coughs> and further analyzed it and explained it with relation to Ahadur Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This will give you the whole background of what I have said. Reward finishes. There's no reward for anything you do leisurely. You eat, you run about, you, you do exercise. And as long as it is difficult for you, you go on doing it with an effort. But when it becomes easy, you do, do not stop it. You run, say, 10 miles a day, in the beginning it may be very difficult. But when you reach perfection and it becomes easy, why should you leave it? That is the time to continue it and with it and enjoy it. So that was the essence of what that great Muslim scholar said, which was further developed by Muslim Islam. <coughs>